fact, even though we have built our cosmological model based on observations and theories and mathematics supporting those theories, there are a few clues that the universe isn't completely adding up. You may have heard about the crisis in cosmology. Well, basically the crisis originated when different methods of measuring the age of the universe started giving different results and still do, and cosmologists have no idea why. The James Webb Telescope, with its recent images, has worsened the crisis even more. We've made a video about the crisis in cosmology, and you can click on the link in the description to watch it. But for now, here's a quick, very quick refresher. The universe is expanding, and distant galaxies are moving farther away from us. When we calculate the rate of the expansion of the universe using the cosmic microwave background, which is the light left over from when the universe was only 380,000 years old, this is what we get. Then there's another method where we know how bright distant supernovas are supposed to be, and we can compare that to how bright they appear when we measure them. We can then use that information to estimate the expansion rate of the universe at the time of the supernova. When we calculate the expansion rate using this method, also called standard candles, this is what we get. So, the expansion rate of the universe is called the Hubble constant. However, the difference between the result of the two methods is called the Hubble tension, and this, my friends, is the crisis in cosmology. Cosmology. But this is not the only crisis anymore. There is a new crisis in town, and it appears to be a distant cousin of the crisis in cosmology, and it is that cousin that we very much despise. I spent all my life developing a particular uh, theory of the universe, and now that theory is being questioned. I welcome that because that's how we move forward. That's how we make progress in science. Welcome to territory. This is your space. When we look up in the sky, given you are not in a city or a place obstructing starlight, you see countless stars. You also see the Andromeda galaxy as a smudge amidst the many stars. That's because the universe is filled with stars and galaxies, but the question is, how much of the universe do they fill? In other words, how much matter is actually there? A simple question, the answer to which is anything but simple. This dilemma exists largely because current cosmological observations simply disagree on how matter is distributed in the present day universe, and this has given rise to the S8 tension, aka, the cousin we do not like. Now, the S8 tension is a measure of the lumpiness or clustering of matter in the universe. To put it simply, picture the universe as this colossal puzzle where the pieces are the matter scattered throughout space. Scientists want to understand how this matter is distributed and how it clumps together. There are two ways to measure it. First, by precisely calculating it using low redshift observations, such as weak gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing is a phenomenon where the immense gravitational pull of massive objects like black holes and galaxies acts as cosmic magnifying glasses, bending and distorting the light from more distant objects that would otherwise be invisible, providing unique insights into the vast universe. However, the S8 value derived from the second method, which is the standard model of cosmology based on cosmic microwave background measurements, does not align with values obtained from low redshift observations. This discrepancy forms the perplexing heart of the S8 tension. So what do we do? Clearly, there is something that we do not understand at all, something that isn't quite adding up despite the countless theories and observations and hypothetical entities supporting those theories. What is going on? To find out, astronomers used one of the most powerful supercomputers in the world to carry out the largest ever cosmological simulations. One cannot even fathom the scale of this project until you realize that the simulations required a total of more than 50 million hours of computer time distributed over the 30,000 processors that make up the Dracosmo 8 supercomputer at Durham University in the UK. The project is called Flamingo, a convoluted acronym of Full Hydra Large Scale Structure Simulations with All Sky Mapping for the Interpretation of Next Generation Observations. Apart from its huge size and high resolution, Flamingo sets itself apart from earlier simulations by incorporating much more than gravity alone. Up to now, most of the cosmological computational simulations of our universe focused on modeling dark matter only, as it is the main matter component. However, even though normal bionic matter makes up only firth of all the mass in the universe, it can have a big effect on how cosmic matter is distributed at small distances. For instance, galactic winds powered by supermassive black holes and supernova explosions may stall the growth of galaxies. And unlike previous simulations that only consider dark matter, Flamingo takes into account and tracks ordinary matter too, because although dark matter dominates gravity, the contribution of ordinary matter can no longer be neglected. 
worked while the simulation marked significant progress like accurately matching the formation of the Milky Way and Andromeda Galaxy amongst many others, it fell short of explaining the observed weak clumping of matter in the present-day universe. In other words, it failed to resolve the very thing it was created to help solve, the essay tension. Or might I say that the Flamingo simulations indicate that something is terribly wrong with our cherished standard model of cosmology. The simulation also contradicts the observations of the James Webb Space Telescope and other observatories about the distribution of matter in the universe. The current theory beautifully explains how galaxies evolved, but there's a problem. It predicts that they're 7% more closely clustered together than they actually are. The new computer simulation is much more detailed, and it takes into account the role of supermassive black holes, but that's not right either. It's still 5% more clumpy. Now, I don't know about you, but this is great for science because now we know that we are headed somewhere and our cosmological model needs some major revisions. And that's how science works. There is a major shift about to come, and it is already on the horizon. That's what I feel. What do you think? Drop in your comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Territory because this is your space. Also, channel membership is now live. Please help me buy a cup of coffee if you enjoy my content. Until next time, Worldview Theory.